district titles are getting decided. Playoff spots awarded. Welcome into week 10 of Friday Night Lights. I'm Curtis Quill. And I'm Nicole Sheeran. Tiebreakers may get broken out these next two Fridays, including this week in our game of the week in District 11 for a Division 2. Gatesville beat Salado. The Eagles beat Robinson. Uh, <laughs> but the Rockets could force a three-way tie for third place in a five-team district. Now that would put the Rockets in position to blast into the playoffs for the first time since 2018, but only if they beat at least one of these two in the tiebreakers. It makes for a really fun game of the week. It really does. <laughs> so let's venture from our world to Rocket Field for this one. Rocket Field, home of, well, yeah, a Rocket. Maybe the best stadium prop in all of Central Texas. We pick it up second quarter. Hornets up 21 zip already. It's Jackson Ludlow back to pass searching to the left side. It's intercepted by Kaysen Herbell and Gatesville gets it back with a chance to score before the half ensuing drive third down. Hornets Jacob Newkirk looking Ooh. to pass and decides to keep it. Picks up the first down with his legs to keep the drive going. A few plays later, it's LJ Hall following his blockers. Yeah, and follows it all the way to the end zone with the little backflip there. Touchdown Gatesville, 28 nothing right before the half. Rockets driving Ludlow, dumps off a screen pass to Ryder Chamley, makes a few men miss and gets the first meaningful pickup of the night for Robinson. After a timeout, after less than 30 to play, Ludlow lost one up, corner of the end zone, but it's Sean Aguilar there for Gatesville instead of someone in blue. Another turnover ends the half. Gatesville walks into the locker room, 28 nothing. They win this one 49 to 6. Wow. Matt Lively was there. From start to finish, Gatesville has taken down Robinson here in our game of the week. The Hornets are taking this one home. Yeah! All right, heck of a game, Coach Aaron Hunter. First off, Coach, this is your first year with this pro, well, not with the program, but as head coach here. Now the season's over. What can you say about this group? It's yeah, just an awesome group. Awesome group that's bought us since day one. Um, you know, they're, they're a great group of kids led by the, the eight captains that have done a great job leading this team. And, uh, you know, they've, they've earned the right, had, had the best record since 2000, I think 17 now. And uh, so we're in the playoffs for three straight years, and now our, we're on our mission to win to go football. Yeah, I think it was first winning season since 2017, best season here. Uh, tonight, you said that this was a complete game. What went into that 49-6 to win? Well, we had, we had our best week of work. You know, last week at Madisonville, we didn't, we didn't play our best, and we knew that. Um, and that's what's great about these kids. They come to work every single day. Um, you know, our model is kind of on the anvil. We got put on the anvil last week, and uh, we came to work this week and had our best week, and it showed tonight. So proud of these kids. How do you prepare for playoffs now? Uh, just uh, We'll figure that out tomorrow. We're going <laughs> to celebrate this one tonight. Celebrate this one yeah. tonight. All right. Now, we're bringing a defensive player here. Man, how many picks did you have tonight? I had two tonight, sir. Two tonight. What was ball hawk? What, what, what was going on where you were just able to get in front of it? Uh, I mean, I was just reading it. Uh, I had to thank my safeties for uh, covering the guy back. And, you know, it just it was a team job. I, I may have got the picks, but it was because of the safeties I was able to get those. How proud are you of this team, first winning season since 2017? I'm very proud. We have built a family. These are my brothers, and we will win because our culture is better than theirs. All right, we like it. Gatesville, Gatesville going home with the win tonight. Guys, I'll send it back to you. A very happy group of Hornets <laughs> right there. It. What a win for the Hornets. That also locks in the playoff race. We will yep. show you the highlights of the district title game later on in the show. It, they're not in yet, but Connolly over Madisonville tonight, so it's locked in. Connolly's the one, Madisonville the two. Your three is Gatesville, your four is Salado, because even in. if Robinson wins next week and Salado loses, Salado has the tiebreaker because it beat Robinson. All right. Let's do something we don't normally do, especially this early in Friday Night Lights. But Nicole, let's talk six man six football. Man Kurt. Now, there is not a team in Texas as dominant as the Abbott Panthers. The top break team in 1A Division 1 hasn't allowed a point since September 16th, and they have yet to play a full 40 minutes this season. Now, the Panthers can wrap up the District 12 title tonight at Penelope, which is pretty impressive going on a uh, three undefeated uh, undefeated in regular season. Now, the quarterback, Dylan Cusera, snaps it to running back Pierce Esparza. Looks, looks, he finds back Nathaniel Fontanez, but it is picked off by the Panthers. Abbott then takes advantage. QB Carson Johnson flips it to running back Isaiah Singleton for a big Abbott six. Now, he comes back again. After that point, it's 8-0. Cusera flips it to Michael Corson, but... 
he stopped right in the tracks. Now it's Singleton once again. He, for, he takes him down. Oh, that's not Singleton. That's a different guy. That's my bad. But here's Singleton once again. Now watch this. He says, get off me, bro. Walks it right into the end zone. That last guy tries, but nope. Leans that in for a big Abbott six on the board. That end of the first quarter, 18-0. Final score there, shutout once again. That's five in a row, Kurt, 48-0. Yeah. What a dominant performance from the Panthers. Top five clash in this in 1A D1. In District 14, 1A Division 1 is Jonesboro and May meet for the third straight season, this time for the district title. Second quarter tied at eight. Hand off to Caleb Crystal near the 35. He finds a gap, turns on the Jets, touchdown Eagles. PAT no good, 14-8 Jonesboro. May would answer though, it's 16-14 Tigers here. Landon Cheatham gets the pitch right up the middle, getting the extra push over the goal line. 24-14 Tigers just like. I go with the pass. You got to have two clean. One, it's Ben Harrell left side. Touchdown Tigers, 32-14. Here's the answer. Still in the second. Nathan off in the end zone. 32-22 tie. Oh, Eagles! Unanswered to win it. Six wow. Just getting ramped up here on Friday. Big schools. Keep it here. Test, test, one, two, three, four, five. They've turned every single light off in all of Robinson. I am in the pitch black of a parking lot. Yes, I can. Test, test, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Test, test, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You would have no idea I'm reporting from a football field. Like, I've never. Last week, Chef Brown got the first win in school history, taking down Pflugerville Connolly on senior night. And tonight, the Bobcats wrap up their first season on the road in Belton. The Tigers can wrap up at least a share of the district title with a home win at home tonight. Now, quarterback throws it. Oh, he runs it downfield, jukes a guy. They're trying to get him down. They finally get him down at that yard line. Learn the name, Sean Peoples. That's right. The next possession, Nigel McCloy with an amazing catch from quarterback Slade LeBlanc. Following passion, they handed it back to McLeod. For the Russian touchdown. Here's that. Here's that play. Look there. at it. Nice Easy money right to the house for six.
Bobcats. Now, they weren't giving up, though, just yet after being shut down for two quarters without scoring. So they finally get on the board with a big run from Kenneth Johnson here. He gallops. Look at him. Oh, no, that was good, Kurt. That was good. He gallops all the way to the house. Look at him go. Woo! That's the guy on that horse. My guy, Kenneth Johnson. And he was on his horse getting that one. Yes, he was. First touchdown of the game for the Bobcats. Final score. Belton Tigers run home with it 63-6. to Ellison down the road hosting Midlothian tonight at Leo Buckley Stadium. The Panthers came to play, though. First possession of the game, it's Chad Ragel connecting with Diego Benson. That is a Panther touchdown. Midlothian in first place in the district for a reason. They follow that with the extra point, so it's seven zip pretty quickly for Midlothian. But the Eagles answer right back. They've got the ball here, and they are going to keep it on the ground. It's Joseph Folks, and folks, that's a touchdown. Eagles go for the extra point. No good. 7-6 at that point. So the Panthers take over. They're going to make a charge downfield themselves. Here is the PAT. Kicking woes have been a bit of a theme with Ellison for as long mm -hmm. as I've been covering them. And you see the unfortunate doink there. Panthers charging downfield to end the half. They give it to Diego Benson. And that's another touchdown for him. Let's go to the board on this one. 27-13 Midlothian holds on to first place. Waco High hosting Cleburne on a water-soaked turf field. You'll see that a little later on. First quarter, Waco driving Reggie Lewis Jr. with the quarterback keeper. He claims a pair of ankles. Absolutely disgusting moves from him. That drive would stall. A few drives later, Cleburne trying to punt it away, but that's a wet ball. Woo, it's slipping and sliding. So is he He's slipping and sliding. Makes contact with the turf. Ultimately nightmare for, the, for Cleburne. Next possession, he hands it off. Gets through some traffic. Can't get far, though. Lions strike first at Waco ISD Stadium. Final score here for you, Waco hey. High Lions. All right, they take it home 23 to 13. That's a win, and you don't ask how, you ask <laughs> how many. Midway has to beat Pflugerville Weiss tonight in its season finale to stay in the hunt for a playoff spot. Um, this isn't going to go well for the Panthers, so if you're a Midway fan in Hewitt, turn away. First play from scrimmage, Tori Simmons catches it in the flat on the right side, switches everyone. to the left side, breaks about 100 tackles and then gets across midfield to the 40 to the 40 yard line. And then few, three plays later, it's a 15 yard touchdown run and the Wolves are howling. It's seven nothing at that point. Weiss celebrating at the field in the Pflugerville. It's Simmons again, this time across the 50. OK, so that's a nice little run. He gets outside. Sets up the Wolves pretty nicely, and then here, that's a touchdown oh, that's a catch long one. for Adrian Wilson. Um, all Weiss at the moment, 49 14. You see that little gallop at looking, the end he did there? Yeah, looking like Midway's going to miss the playoffs for the third straight year. All right, we're still just warming things up here on Friday Night Lights. We'll go to another district title game next, but as we go to break, let's listen to the winner of this week's Battle of the Bands, the Rogers Eagles. More Friday Night Lights straight ahead.
Well, Rogers was on a heater to start the season, but then losses to Palmer and Johnson City in consecutive weeks kind of dampened things. Yet the Eagles find themselves in the same place they have the past few years under Charlie Roten in the mix for a district championship. Rogers hosting Lexington in an Eagle battle for the likely 13-3A Division II crown. And uh, let's be honest, they could see each other again in a few weeks. If you like sloppy football, then this <laughs> is the game for you. Rogers would stall inside the Lexington 10 on their first drive. Go for a field goal, it's blocked. So the Lexington Eagles looking for a chance to take Bomber. flight. And it's Case Evans dropping back, loading up. Dalen Washington wide open, can't come up with it. Walk-in touchdown opportunity missed. Drive would continue though. Evans over the middle, ball tipped. Nope, that's, that's a tackle. So fourth down, looking for Mason Beal and more of the same there. 20 to nothing, but this game was scoreless at the half. Lexington is your district champ. All right, we've still got more Friday Night Lights ahead. Up next, we'll head back to our Game of the Week.
final few weeks of the season are a chess match, and tonight it's night to E4. Welcome into week 10 of Friday Night Lights. I'm your traffic cop, Curtis Quillen, alongside Nicole Sheeran. We will hear from Matt Lively, we hope, in a moment. Last week, we saw a district championship won. Now this week, the playoff push is in full swing as the regular season ends for one of our area's 4A teams. Gatesville beat Salado. The Eagles beat Robinson, but the Rockets could force a three-way tie for third place in a five-team district. Are you following me to this point? Yes, take notes, take notes. That would put the Rockets in position to blast into the playoffs for the first time since 2018, but only if they beat at least one of these two in the tiebreakers. Now it makes for a really fun game of the week. It does, and it makes the nerd in me really <laughs> happy because I love situations like this. There it is, the famous rocket at Rocket Field in Robinson. We pick it up second quarter, Hornets up 21 zip. Jackson Ludlow back to pass, looking left. It's picked off. Kaysen Herbellin and Gatesville gets it back with a chance to score before the half ensuing drive. Gatesville facing third down and it's Jacob Newkirk looking rolling to his right looking like Johnny Manziel Woo! and he decides to tuck in and run more like Johnny Manziel picks up a huge first down and then later on it's LJ Hall following his blockers and he follows them all the way into the blue area of the field that's called the end zone touchdown Gatesville it's 28 nothing right before the half the Rockets driving though Ludlow dumps it off Ryder Chambly makes a few men miss gets the first meaningful pickup for Robinson on the night Gets out of bounds after a timeout. Less than 30 seconds to play. Ludlow looking end zone. Woo! Lofting Bomber. one up. Nobody home. It's Sean Aguilar there for Gatesville instead. Another turnover ends the half. Gatesville walks into the locker room up 28-0. They roll 49-6. Matt Lively had a front row seat to this one. I know that looks like a generic background behind him, but we promise you Rocket Field is back there somewhere. <laughs> Matt, this was a huge, huge statement for Gatesville tonight. Yeah, I do promise you a football <laughs> game happened somewhere behind me in the vicinity. I'm in a parking lot right now. The lights are out. I am maybe the only person in the city of Robinson. Uh, everybody goes to Rocket Cafe after game, so I don't blame them. They're eating there right now. I would do the same if I wasn't live on your television. Unfortunately, that meal that's being had at Rocket Cafe may not be as enjoyable because Gatesville did come in here and they won 49-6. to It was a dominant performance by the Hornets start to finish. Aaron Hunter's got to be very happy with this one. I said, how do you prepare for playoffs? He said, not yet. We're going to celebrate tonight, and they absolutely deserve it. This was a dominant defensive effort. I didn't see the Rockets move down the field uh, with big plays consecutively all night long. They may have had one or two big chunk plays here and there, but they couldn't get any rhythm going until maybe the last drive, which I really will call a garbage time touchdown. There was a personal foul on the Hornets that really put the Rockets into scoring position. But it was a sloppy game from Robinson. They had a ton of personal fouls. Mike Ludlow was getting upset with his team over that. Uh, this is a promising, promising program. But uh, the coach himself told me that he was starting something like four freshmen, four sophomore, six juniors tonight. Uh, very few seniors on this Robinson team. So it's going to be a work in progress. But for Gatesville, you have to be really happy for them. First winning season since 2017. They've locked down that third spot in the playoffs in their district. So we are going to be covering the Hornets in the playoffs. That's very exciting to say and to hear. Uh, but the game itself, maybe not one of our best front row seats that we've had all season. 49-6, to the final out here in Robinson. Uh, I'm just hoping that nobody nobody thinks I'm like stranded out here. I'm a man in the middle of a field with a light on. It looks like I'm SOS calling for help. <laughs> yeah. No, that's not the that, – that's kind of – It is spooky there. season. It's it's spooky he out here. He looks like a floating head a little bit. A little bit. It's a good look. <laughs> it's a good look. Uh, look, uh, Gatesville's playoff bound for the third straight year, and this they'll get to play their playoff game for the second straight year. Mm -hmm. Remember, they didn't get to play that game against Carthage two years ago. So, Matt, we'll check in with you during big picture here in just a bit. Elsewhere in District 11, 4A, D2, it's Connolly and Madisonville rolling this season with the outright district championship game happening tonight along I-45. A one seed in the playoffs is always an enormous plus. Can Connolly get its second district championship in three years? Now the cadets hit the road having won three straight after losses to China Spring and Brownwood. Connolly comes out with it. Oh, there's the guy, Keeper Sibley, running it down the right sideline, booking it all the way to the house, having a game for himself once again. Wow. Touchdown, Connolly. Now Madisonville drive first quarter, blessing the game, big game, Philip Green Jr. short, touchdown run, 
Oh, no, not yet. He doesn't get there quite yet. He's taken down, but he's signaling he's going to get there. Here it comes. And there it is. And he pushes it right in. Phillip Easy Green six Jr. for the Mustangs. Looking like Philip Blue Jr. because he's in the end zone. <laughs> Later in the half, though, Jaylani McDaniel, quarterback run for the Connolly touchdown. Easy six for those cadets. Take it to the house. And then, you know that name we've said a lot this season? Oh, yeah. That Sibley kid? Mm-hmm. Just wait for it. After we listen to the fight song it's here. It's a nice little song we got It is a on. nice little song. Wow. Woo. And there's Sibley. Look at that. Shovel pass. That duo right there, Jaylani McDonald sibley duo, is iconic. It is. Unlike anything else. Huge wow. win. 61-14 for Connolly. District 11 3A Division 1 is an actual hornet's nest, pun kind of intended. <laughs> Entering tonight, there is a four-way tie. For fourth place, I'm not making this up. <laughs> okay, but that's thanks to McGregor's upset of Academy last week. And now it's those two, Rockdale and Troy, who have all beat each other, battling for just one playoff spot. Academy on the road facing Rockdale, looking for some separation in that race. First quarter, 7-6, Tigers on top. Bladen Barchak, he's looking Ooh. for Robert Owens. Whoop, got it. <laughs> Touchdown, 14-6. Rockdale in the lead. Yes, yes, that's a real thing. Academy <laughs> answers, though. Casey Mraz, quarterback scramble, cuts the lead to 14-13 at that point. But the Tigers are still in the lead. Second quarter, third and long near the goal line. Barchak going for Jaron Moreno. <laughs> Woo! Nice catch. Touchdown, Tigers. It's 21-13. Rockdale time winding down in the first half. Little River Academy facing third and long. Casey Mraz rolling to his left, oh. rolling back to his right, looking like Eli Manning in the Super Bowl. Can he find David Tyree? Yes, he can. Who else? Scout Brazil. 34-27. Academy. Game. Looks like Academy will be going to the playoffs. Meanwhile, at the top of the district, the title bout between Cameron Yo and Franklin. This was a big game, guys. Opening drive, Court Lowry pitches to Bryson Washington. It's blocked by Lowry. Gets to the edge. Scores a big six, 7-0. And just a little bit more. Franklin here. If you like more Lion, Lowry more Lion. pitches to Jaden Jackson, has a crease, makes a few guys miss. Later on, he's oh, he books it. He's got some wheels on him all the way to the house. 14 zip. Franklin with another score. Um, yeah, that's wow. that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Now so. to end the zone. Oh, oh, that stiff arm. Oh. He stiffed arm not taking the right sideline. Booking all the way to the house. That's the same guy there, guys. He that, said, uh-uh, can't do that on me. You know who's really looking forward to that is Dave Aranda. Bryson Washington, uh -huh. Baylor commits. Uh, here's a little air action. Play action. Devin. It's Lowry to Devin Hidrago. 35 35 nothing. zip. Final score, Franklin takes this one. 63 to, oh, not final score. It's the fourth quarter right now, 63 to 7. Lorena closing its regular season at Troy, looking to lock up the number three seed in the district. The Trojans actually dominated the first quarter, jumped out to the early lead. Lorena down 14 7. And quarterback Jackson Generals keeps his troops marching, calling his own number, ties this game up at 14 apiece. The point after is what extends it to that level. Next possession, Ray Biles decides to try things in the air with Generals, but He's picked off in the end zone by Hagen Welch, the senior making things happen. That drive, however, beep, 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 it's stall. The Leopards get the ball back, back, on the, back to work on the ground because, you know, if it's working, then keep doing it. If it ain't broke, yeah, why fix it? Yeah, if it ain't broke, why fix it? Cason Taylor, the burst up the middle there. Junior covers it up like a mother hen, making sure he doesn't fumble. You can blame Chris Radcliffe Chris, for that no. joke. <laughs> a few plays later, Jaden Porter would score before losing the football. 21-14 at that point into the half. 49-21, all arena from there. Now, West scored 89 points in its last home game. Can the Trojans lock up their third straight district title against Dallas Gateway? Gators come out with a muffed punt to start this game here by Ledger Nardle on the 30-yard line. Oh, but it's recovered by Ledger Nardle on the 30-yard line. Now, that's what gets West rolling. The Trojans pick it up from there, take advantage. QB Zane Minen takes the snap, hands it off to start running back TJ McCutcheon. You've heard the name before, takes it right to the house. That same drop, but their defense wakes up as well. That oh. same guy takes him down. This quarterback, Zane Minen, runs it all the way to the house. He said, listen, I'm gonna do this on my own, guys. Takes it to the house, big six for West. I wanna say it's 18-0 by that point. West kept on rolling with this one to 
clinch the shutout. 63 to zero final score on that one. 152 to mm. nothing in two games. That's insane. That's absolutely insane. Absurd. Rosebud Lot was expected to sneak into the playoffs this year, but it has surged in district play. The Cougars could make a huge statement tonight and lock up second place in District 8 at the same time. Cougars visiting Marlin, the battle for Falls County. <laughs> going for their fifth straight dub tonight. Marlins Mario Hopwood getting the nice run on the Bulldogs opening drive goes to the right side and picks up, I don't know, 20, 25 yeah. yards. That's a nice little game there. And then on Marlins next possession, it's Bulldog QB Desmond Woodson intercepted Woo. by Moses Fox. One good interception deserves Another good interception. Oh, the helmet came off. And that's what off. we have here. DJ Hicks puts one up for grabs in the end zone. Zakmarion Lofton picks it off and starts running and keeps running all the way at the 20, the 15, the 10, the 5. Touchdown Bulldogs, 101 yards on the INT return. 7 nothing dogs at that point. Let's go to the final score. Marlin clinches second place, 32. His 18. mom said it's dinner time and he was running home for supper. He was on that running one. home for supper. Craig Horn, the man responsible for this Longhorn turnaround. Offense was cooking. First handoff to Kelby Hollingson. Takes it to the right side. Woo! Makes a few men miss. Captures a pair of ankles. Gets into the axle red zone. Now a few plays later. Tyson Michelle gets the handoff following his army of blockers straight into the end zone. It's 7 0 crossroad. Or no, Axel. Axel, my bad. Troy Allen takes the jet sweep, goes to the right. Easy in for the score, absolutely untouched. Now, the Longhorns here uh, run it in. 13 zip. Mitchell and, again. Oh, that same guy, Mitchell, runs it straight into the end zone. This guy's on fire tonight. Yeah, so that's 20 to nothing at that point. You know, you like they big finals, roll. right? Yeah, 53 to 3. Woo! CTCS hosting New Braunfels Christian School tonight as the Lions look to rebound from a loss to Shiner St. Paul. Third snap from scrimmage. Yes, as in one, two, third play of the game. Get ready to hear the name Reagan Ragsdale a whole bunch. He wouldn't be tackled tonight. That's a touchdown run. Lions on the board, 7 0. Uh, he, the only thing that, the only place with more traffic than what he was able to get through on that one was I 35. I mean, every time he touched the ball, it seemed that Ragsdale ripped off a huge gainer tonight. Here's another one. Took a whole team down uh, to get this man Dog down on the ground. Him. And so uh, what's going to happen next? You know, if it ain't broke, you don't fix it. They're on the move once again. Oh, they're not going to Ragsdale here. They go to Cooper Smith oh, and Jacob Good. It's not a good catch. It's a great one. Good line, Chris. Uh, One-handed <laughs> snag. The Lions keep the chains moving, keep racking up the first downs, and go back to what works. Hey, you know that guy? That's Ragsdale. 14 0. Lions at that point. 56 22 is your final. CTCS gets the win. Gerald on the road tonight looking to clinch a playoff spot against Maynard New Tech to cap off an emotional week. Kickoff after break. Now the kid runs it down, all the way down. He keeps on going, keeps on going, to keeps the 40, on going. To midfield. To midfield. Oh, and he is taken down inside the new tech 30. <laughs> now Gerald's pick six, here we go. Oh, and it's picked off, he loses the guy. He had some hops there, what is that, Michael Jordan out here? Runs it all the way down to the end zone. There was, I, a, there, is a, there was a flag on the play. There was. A it was against confusion. new tech though, so the Gerald pick six stands and then. We got a field goal here. Here's the field goal. Not bad for a four. Through the post, yeah. nice field goal. We got another shutout. Gerald takes this one 50 to 0 final score. So the Cougars are playoff bound for the first time in a long time. Time Woo. now for one of our favorite segments and Nicole for Gridiron Player of the Week. There's nothing we love more than a game winner. We love a game winner. And you know who had one? China Spring got a huge win Friday night thanks to the foot of Thomas Barr to beat number one Stephenville at home. I mean, what a game. <laughs> My grandkids might hear about it, you know, my, my kids might hear about it, all that kind of stuff. It was the showdown high school football fans had all been waiting for. Two reigning state champs, number one Stephenville and number two China Spring, to duke it out in district play. And the Cougars were trailing by one in the final seconds of the fourth quarter. 
I was really hyped and I was I was clapping. I was like, everyone was sad and down, and I was like, we still have 59 seconds to get into field goal range or score a touchdown. So I knew I knew it wasn't over. The fate of China Spring all came down to a 42-yard field goal. I got out there, I set the tee down, and I was a little bit nervous, and I had this wave of just nerves. I was like, well, if I miss this, it's game over. And then as I took my first step, I was like, ooh, what if I miss this? But no one else questioned he'd be able to nail it. And the best part is that there wasn't a single member on our sideline, coaches and players included, that had any doubt in, in uh, his ability to get it done. With a clutch kick right between the posts, Thomas did his job. And the next part was, well... Absolute pandemonium. The players stormed the field and had a celebration for the history books. I think it was a lot of I love yous, for sure. And then I think it was just appreciating him and how good he is. His skills come from his practice, and he never stops working. He comes out here every day, uh, works super hard at critiquing, whether it's field goals or uh, kickoff on sides. And he just works really hard. And so in that moment, for him to come out there um, as the clock was going to expire and knowing that this is what he's trained for, uh, it was so awesome to see like kind of all this hard work just finally pay off. You know, the, the fortunate thing for him in that situation is that he kicks it, we win the game because of him. This is a Cougar squad who took home a state championship title last season and is looking for round two. But even after that iconic moment last year, this game takes the cake. I would say that was probably the top because Carthage was there last year, Carthage, but I think this game definitely not going off. I think it was easily probably the best moment of my high school career so far. A golden foot to win a golden ball. <laughs> all right, area scores tonight. We start in Class 6A, Harker Heights and Coppers Co. facing off. It's all heights as expected, 55 nothing, And then Brian all over Hutto, 53-34. So it looks like Brian and Temple will go Division 1 in District 12 6A. Then we got Colleen Shoemaker. Shoemaker takes this one final score 21 to 7. This game, University Pflugerville Connolly, as Kurt would say, 78 to 7 final. And by doing that, <laughs> University now can play for a district championship next yes. week after going 0 10. Last Incredible. Year. Incredible. I, oh, how can you not be romantic about Texas high school football? 48 <laughs> 7, China Spring all over Waxahachie Life, and its lane pass is taking down Marble Falls 42 to 20. Grandview Whitney, Grandview runs away with this one, 41 to 7 final. Kemp Teague, we got another shutout, 53 to 0. Teague takes it. Lots of brick walls tonight. Uh, Malakoff all over Mejia last night, 55 13. Clifton gets its second win of the season, Woo. ends a seven game skid, 49 14 awesome. over Elkhart. Valley Mills, Boskyville. Valley Mills just runs away with this one, 21 to 13 final. Bruce Valetti, Moody. Hey, Moody takes this 33 to 8. I'm sorry, Valley Mills beat Boskyville? Yes. That, I believe, clinches a playoff spot for Riesel, who got shut out at Crawford tonight. Take notes, everyone. Nothing Take notes. Because <laughs> I was looking at this earlier in the week. So Crawford beats Riesel 43-0. Holland all over Schulenberg on the road. 53-33. Schulenberg's coach resigned just a few days ago. Mark Dawson, we got another zeros on the board. Mark takes this one 54 Zip. And then Bremen Bartlett. Bremen take this one 49 zip. Uh, Mark, that is Kevin Hoffman's 100th win as a head coach. Wow. And it locks up a district title for the wow, Panthers. Wow, that's awesome. Chilton all over Iola on the road, 43 zip. Calvert Oglesby, 32 42. Tigers take this one, 42. Dimebox Buckholtz. No score reported. No score reported for that one. All right, uh, Vanguard gets a forfeit win over Carrollton, Prince of Peace. Not sure what Those happens names. there. Same thing with uh, Parkview. Parkview uh, forfeits its game tonight. So Mineral Wells Community Christian gets the win there. Rockwall Heritage, another shutout on the board. Eagle Christian drops this one. 46-0 final. Eagle Christian going through some stuff at the moment. Yeah. Okay, let's bring Matt Lively back into the fold. Matt, let's talk big picture. Are you still alive, Matt, out there? Does he have his light on? He does have his oh, light yes. on. The hair is gone, though. I am. It's spooky out here. The floating head has it's... returned. Matt. The hair's going everywhere, but nothing else is going anywhere. There's tumbleweeds back here. Uh, Matt, shocking results tonight? Any for you? 
Honestly, no. When listening to you guys, and then I was on the Dave Campbell's app in the car kind of looking up scores, there really wasn't. Maybe Valley Mills over Bosqueville. Um, for me, no. There, there was nothing that was overly surprising. I did want to, Curtis, go back to the Kevin Hoffman thing, 100 wins. There was a great tidbit on Twitter from David Smoke who tweeted out that he, Kevin Hoffman, is now second all-time in Texas high school football winning percentage with coaches with at least 100 wins in 11-man football. Um, so that's a great stat. It's yeah. not surprising, Incredible. but I just think it's a great stat for Kevin Hoffman. We've all covered him. We love Kevin Hoffman. Uh, Mart's an incredible program. So that's my maybe big takeaway from tonight. You love it when successful people are incredible human yes. beings, and that describes Kevin Hoffman to a T. With all the state championships he's won as a coordinator and as a head coach, yeah. the guy is the mm -hmm. same today as he was eight years ago when he was still an assistant at Martin. Nicole, any shocking I results? I think we need to talk about something that we just learned. Okay. Stephenville? Yeah. <laughs> Stephenville upset by Alvarado on senior night. That drops Stephenville from second in District 5 for a Division One to fourth, puts Alvarado into the playoffs as the number three seed, and La Vega's in second place like with what? a week to go. <laughs> That's my surprising. That when I heard that, my mouth dropped right yeah. here where I'm standing. Look, I don't believe La Vega played tonight. I think no. this was their bye week, and <laughs> they moved up. Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> um, let's talk eight to a Division One. Riesel appears playoff bound. Did we see this coming after the Rosebud Lot debacle? <clears throat> you know, maybe because that whole Rosebud Lot Riesel game. I was there. I had that front row seat for that one. It was a tough fought battle till the end. Rosebud Lock kind of ran away with it at the end, but they have Mason Heath. He was one sure. of our player of the weeks or gridiron player of the weeks. I mean, they have some strong players on that squad. So no, I'm not surprised really. Matt, staying in that district, let's talk about your favorite team in the world, the Marlin Bulldogs. <laughs> That's a big win for them tonight. Yeah, huge win. <laughs> you know what? Hey, I'm an unbiased journalist, uh, but the Marlin Bulldogs took me on a great ride last year through the playoffs. I just think it's great what Ruben Torres has done out there in Marlin. Yeah, huge win. Uh, I believe that they've locked up second place behind Crawford, obviously, uh, who's still undefeated and knocked off Marlin earlier. But the Bulldogs are – this happened last year. They got hot at the right time. They're hot right now. Um, they had injuries that they were dealing with in the beginning of the season. I don't even know if they've gotten Trajan Butler back yet. Um, and if, if he's not back and he's coming back for the playoffs, watch out because Marlin is a hoss to have to deal with at that point. So the fallout from this week, yes, I've moved my laptop right it's in front of me. Right here. <laughs> uh, Riesel clinches a playoff spot because even if Bosqueville wins next week, they would finish with three district wins, which would tie Riesel. Right. And... Um, no, so Bosqueville does need to beat Riesel next week because that's who they play. Okay, so we're learning things in real time. <laughs> Bear with me. I've had, there's a lot of schedules to remember. So it's Bosqueville Riesel next week for a playoff spot in 8 to 8 Division 1. Nerd alert. <laughs> Nerd alert. <laughs> Winner gets Cayuga. But how big of a win is it for Marlin? Because now by beating Rosebud Lot, Rosebud Lot falls to third in district. Mm -hmm. They're paired now with District 7 to a Division 1. And Matt, you were there last night when Axel locked up the number two seed in that district. That's a dangerous Axel team that right now because that run game is getting more potent every week. Yeah, I, I was talking about it last night during our 6 o'clock newscast before Axel even played, but Craig Horn has just done a really impressive job of coming in to Axtell and rebuilding this program. He's been all over the map. I believe he's been at Itasca, Italy, uh, and one other school as well before Hubbard, going to Axtell. So this is a guy with a lot of playoff experience. I believe he played in a state championship game. So I would, I would uh, not want to see Axtell in the playoffs if I'm a team in this area. Um, let's look at... Bear with me, who Marlin plays next week. Hopefully yeah, who do Rob they face? doesn't take this shot. Um, Marlin faces, I believe, Valley Mills to close the season All next right. week. So that should be a Marlin win. Easy win. Let's talk dominance now. Mm. Um, is Abbott the most dominant team you've seen? Okay, first of all, most dominant team, yes. First six-man football I've ever seen also. Pretty fun. So it was awesome. I had a great time. That squad can play. That is all I have to say. Terry Crawford said it 
when I interviewed him earlier. He said, we ride on our defense, and I'm telling you, that is exactly what they showed tonight. They were tanks out there. They were. Jonesboro gets the May Monkey off its back, wins the district title. Absolutely huge. I'm calling it here. They will see each other in the regional final. I like that. that yeah. Those two teams have yeah. run that half of the bracket. They're in the same district now, and so they're both in the playoffs. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> uh, they're going to see each other again Absolutely. in the regional final. Okay, one big key, as we always do. Baylor on the road tomorrow facing Texas Tech. 630 kick. Matthew will be in the land of the tortillas. Whip into Lubbock. Biggest key <laughs> for, for Baylor and Tech. I'll go first. You have to, have to, have to wrap up because the defense has struggled on the road lately. Matthew. Uh, I'm just going control the noise as best you can. It's sold out. Good Patrick one. Mahomes is going to be in the building. It's a blackout. Somehow control the noise. Matt, you stole mine. I was going to say the exact same thing. They got to control the outside noise. They've been in environments away games, Provo, West Virginia. They have to get it together and lock in. That's week 10 of Friday Night Lights. Thank you so much for taking this ride with us. For Matt Lively, Nicole Shear, and Darren Wallace, Rob Kelso, Michael Graham, and all of us working the late shift here at 6 News, we say so long. We'll see you next week under the light.